WPC 89 driver board, number one of two from a client. And here's something, when you power up a WPC power driver board, there should be five LEDs on. One, two, three, that's the five volt, four, and five. These two are designed to indicate low uh, line voltage. They are useless. So you don't need to worry about those. I've got my WPC test ROM in and we're going to advance to the functions that the solenoid driver takes care of. And this is the coil test. Sorry about that glare. All good. GI and all five strings are dimming as they should. I'm going to do lamps and flashers at the same time. Flashers all working and lamps all working. Well, that is it. This board is good to go. And the second of a pair of WPC power driver boards. And I did the same thing to this board that I did to the prior one. C2 and C4 were replaced, C5 was replaced. Headers all the way around. This one's interesting. You can see that the LED six is not lit and LED one, I guess that is with, that's a 12 volt LED. This is probably 18, I don't remember. Uh, and you can see that my 12 volt indicator is not lit interesting the mpu boots fine but when i try to operate any switches no joy well that makes sense because there's no 12 volts uh, that the mpu needs to do switch detection interesting that it isn't called out usually you'd get a check f114 f115 message but the test rom apparently does not do that so let me go back and fix this 12 volt circuit so here i'm measuring test point eight, where there's supposed to be 18 volts of DC power, and that gets regulated down to 12 volts by the 7812. The only thing that stands between this test point and 18 volts is bridge rectifier one, which is the bottom one, on the dual heat sink configuration, and I should have che checked it before I let this board leave my bench, but I'm almost positive that that bridge is going to be open. The only other possibility was F114, the lower fuse, and that is good. You can check AC power between that fuse and pin seven of J101, and this is your AC power input that gets rectified at BR1, smoothed by C6 and C7 to create the 18 volts. Then it goes all the way across the board to this 7812 to get regulated down to 12 volts. Back to the bench with this board and I can quickly show you how to test bridge rectifiers. This is BR2. A lot of people change this rectifier out trying to <clears throat> um, solve reset issues. There's never any need to do that. Here's BR1 and this is the one I suspect. So I'm gonna test a working bridge rectifier first. So I have black on the leg of the rectifier that is out of square and red on the flanking legs. And then I go across with the red and black on the flanking legs. And that is a good bridge rectifier as each reading was between 0.4 and 0.6, 0.7 we say sometimes. Now I'm gonna go down to the suspect bridge and that is open. I have never seen a bridge rectifier open on all four legs, interesting. And here is the open bridge and the new one I'm gonna put on. And the whoever put this bridge on in the past, and this is the second one, at least the second one that's been on, because that's not a factory job. Uh, failed to put any heat conductive grease on the heat sink 
and that's designed to transfer more efficiently the heat from the metal case of the bridge to this aluminum heat sink. And if you do not do that, the bridges will run hot and uh, their life will be curtailed a fair amount. So when I put this back together, I'm going to put some heat sink compound on here. This stuff right here. I'll put it on both bridges. And when I put this back on, I will screw the heat sink to the existing bridge first and then let the other bridge find a plane that it's happy with because the tops of the bridges have to be in the same plane as this heat sink. You can see how big these holes are for the bridge rectifiers. There's really no reason to ever tear one of those holes. And look at all that solder flux left over from the prior work. Back on the bench now after BR1 has been replaced. And let's power on. We'll see if the driver board LEDs light. And they do. That's the 12 volt LED. And this is the 18 volt LED. And lamp matrix is doing what it should be doing. The 5 volts is 4.87. That's not a very good reading off of this Chinese voltmeter, but that's plenty in a game, actually. And the 12 volts is back, 12.00. So let's put this board into test. I know some people are going to disagree with me about that 4.87. It's more than just that voltage reading that causes game resets. And since we've got a good clean 5 volts out of this board now, since I replaced C5... I see no reason that this board won't perform perfectly in the game. Also replace the power headers J101 and J114. Solenoids working perfectly. GI test. Oops. Yeah. What am I doing? Got my finger on the wrong button. There we go. Lamps and flashers, all the flash lamp circuits and all the lamp circuits are working perfectly. Well, this board is good to go. Now that we've got uh, six fuses replaced on this board, I suspect it was a hanger queen and, and what, what that means in um, airline or military aircraft parlance is that it's a jet that's in the hangar forever and people steal parts out of it. So two 5 amp fuses were stolen over here, uh, 3 amp, 3 amp, 3 amp, and another 3 amp fuse were stolen. Interesting, these two fuses most of the time on WPC games that take a type 3 driver board, this one, see it's missing all these parts, those fuses aren't used because they fuse the flipper power that is now provided by the Fliptronics 2 board. Some, sometimes games will use those circuits, sometimes not. But if you're in a pinch for a fuse, it's a good place to look. Thanks for sending it.